If you're looking for a tutorial on the basics of getting started with Pika Labs, or if you want to get up to speed with all the amazing new updates that Pika 1.0 has gotten us, this is the right video for you. So there's been massive improvements in the quality of videos generated with 1.0 compared to the beta version. And in my opinion, I think it's the best AI video generator out there. It's also 100% free, which is pretty awesome for the quality that you get. This is going to be a longer comprehensive tutorial, so make sure to check the timestamps to navigate around. You can now make really high quality videos using just basic prompts. This is a Pixar style werewolf I animated and I used a new video extension tool that increases the video duration. You can see so much dynamic motion and the frames are really consistent without any flickering. The style and the anatomy also look really good. The anime style also looks like it got a complete overhaul. And the animations look much sharper and cleaner now. Generating anime style videos with the Studio Ghibli style seems to work particularly well. The new and improved video animations also carry over to image to video generations. Using reference images works much better than before. This is a piano player that I animated that shows the quality of the motions you can generate now. Here's a headshot of a female barbarian I generated for a past video that I never got around to animating. But the speaking motion looks really great. Combining different camera motions is also now possible with the video extension tool, like starting out with the rotation and then zooming out. There's a new expand canvas tool which is video out painting. Taking the same headshot as before, we can expand the dimensions of the video to fill in the top of her head and the upper chest of her torso. This is one of the coolest unique features that Pika Labs has and it works really well across different types of videos from what I've seen. There's also the new video to video animation that we'll cover which allows you to use videos as references to the AI. And finally, there's video in painting for filling in parts of the video like changing your clothing and attire or adding in Christmas decorations in the background. To get started, head to pika.art. I'll put all the links in the description. You can use either a Google or a Discord account to sign in. Since I already have a Discord account that's connected to Pika Labs, I'll sign in using the Discord option. Here's the homepage. There's going to be a bunch of example videos that Pika Labs has for you to look at. I would definitely recommend checking out these video prompts to see what's possible. At the top right, you can choose between a grid view, which is the four squares icon, and is how the page is being displayed right now. Or you can choose a wide view, which is the two rectangles icon, which will full screen each video, so you can see the entire resolution. I'd recommend sticking with the grid view, because that makes it way easier to keep track of all the videos you're generating. In the top left, you can navigate between the Explore homepage, or go to the My Library page. The My Library page is where all your generated videos are being stored. It's kind of like a private chat with the Pika bot. I've got a bunch of videos here already, but if you're just starting out, this is going to be empty. So let's start by generating our first video. At the bottom of the page where it says describe your story in the chat message, that's where you enter your prompts. I'll start with something easy like a uh, zebra walks through a field. You can press enter or click on the star shaped button to submit the generation job. You'll see a new video thumbnail pop up in the top left where you can track the progress of the video generation. This usually goes by pretty quickly, I'd say less than a minute or so. Although sometimes it does get stuck for a bit, so don't get frustrated if that happens, just refresh the page or generate it again. So our video is finished generating. Let's take a look at it in the full screen resolution. We can click on this icon in the bottom left that looks like the four corners of a square. If you're used to the old Pika model, you'll probably notice uh, improvement in the quality of the video and also more accurate anatomy in general. This video looks fine to me. We can download it with a download button in the top right of the video player. And it should show up in our downloads folder. You can also delete it using the trash bin icon, but once it's gone, there's no way to restore it. So I'd recommend holding on to them. There's been a bunch of times where I deleted a video and then later regretted it. There's a bunch of other buttons below the video player. We'll cover all of them later in the video. But for now, just press escape or hit the exit button at the top right. The feature you'll use the most in Pika Labs is retry. This basically runs the exact same generation job again with the same prompts and any parameters or references you used. Pika Labs will generate a slightly different video each time depending on your prompt. So usually it takes three to five retries to get a video that you're satisfied with. 
when you use the retry button, you'll see these mini thumbnails pop up below your video. And that's how you can navigate between the different video generations using the same prompt. I'll usually use this at least three times. Now, if after three to five retries, it still doesn't look quite the way you want, I would use a reprompt button to make some minor adjustments to the prompt. So the way this works is, let's say we did a bunch of retries on the zebra. And now while we wait for the AI to finish, we'll start another video with a prompt of something like an astronaut on Mars. Now when the zebra videos are finished and we see that there aren't exactly what we want, we can click on reprompt, which will copy and paste the exact prompt we used to generate those zebra videos into the prompt box at the bottom of the screen. And it also keeps any image or video references and parameters that we used. It doesn't seem that important now, but it's super useful for later on if we want to use longer prompts or attach image and video references and use different parameters. When it comes to prompting, it's important to be specific with exactly what you want. One important thing to think about is the different animation mediums you want your video to be generated with. One example would be Pixar style, which works extremely well on Pika 1.0 and I think is one of the strong points of this AI. The anime style, which has been upgraded quite a bit from the beta version, I'd recommend trying out the Studio Ghibli keyword for a more refined and elegant look. You can also use a cartoon or Disney style, which produces old school looking animations, similar to vintage movies like The Lion King. It's really important to actually specify the specific style of video you want, because otherwise Pika Labs gets confused and will just alternate between random styles. If I want something realistic for the zebra, I might add the words nature documentary at the end of my prompt, or switch to a GoPro video camera, which will give that recognizable fisheye lens look. I'll go more in depth in prompting in a future video, so make sure to subscribe for that. Now a really great feature that Pika added is the extend video feature, which lets you prolong the duration of your videos. So by default, the videos generated in Pika Labs are 3 seconds long, but we can extend them by 4 seconds and do it as many times as we want. Here's a video of a werewolf that I generated in Pixar style. Open up the full screen video player and you see the extend by 4 seconds feature in the bottom panel. Click on this and you'll see at the bottom of the screen the original prompt, the thumbnail of the video which is 1280 by 720 pixels and also the add 4 seconds option selected. Just click on the start button to submit the add 4 seconds job and increase the video length to a total of 7 seconds. Let's take a look at what we got. I found that the Pika Labs Extend Video Tool works better than other AI platforms like Runway although it does seem to have this habit of distorting and deforming things after the initial 3 seconds in the extended video section. Here's a video of a horse in the winter that I extended to 7 seconds and you can see around the 3 second mark it starts to warp and deform a bit. To deal with this we have to use negative prompting. So here's the original 3 second video of the horse opened up. And then I'll just select the extend 4 seconds button. Now at the bottom of the interface, navigate to the parameters button which looks like two lines and circles at the end of them. Inside there's a box that says negative prompt. The negative prompt is where you put all the keywords for stuff that you don't want to be in the video. So some example words would be deform, distort, ugly, warped, blurry. You might also have to add in some specific negative prompt words for the video you're generating. Once we have that filled in, we can try the generation job again. And this time the video of the horse extended to 7 seconds no longer deforms after the 3 second mark. Here's one important tip I found about negative prompting in Pika Labs. As of version 1.0, a lot of the times Pika seems to like generating these oversaturated colors for some reason. Like this video I generated from a reference image, which I'll discuss in a minute. And it has some crazy bright blue colors in it. If I see this happening, I'll add in the word oversaturated to my negative prompt, which will discourage Pika Labs from generating very saturated colors. Now, looking at the video again, it'll have much more natural looking colors. Inside the parameters box, you can also control for the seed, which is the randomness. So if you generate two videos using the exact same seed, the video will be the same, which is kind of useful for debugging specific prompt keywords. There's also the consistency with text parameter, 
The higher this value is, the closer the video will follow the prompt you give. And the lower the value is, the less the video follows your prompt. So if you find that the videos you're creating don't really follow the prompt as closely as you like, you might want to bump this up to 20 or so. Now in Pika, there's also the video upscaling feature, which you can use to upscale the resolution by two times. If we open up the video player interface, and in the bottom panel, select the upscale option, it'll automatically start a video upscaling job. In the video player with a generation job, you'll be able to see the label that says upscale in it. A werewolf can be upscaled from 2080 by 720 up to 2560 by 1440. The upscale quality is alright, it's not anything spectacular. There's a bit more sharpness to the video. The good news is that it doesn't seem to hurt the video quality with random visual artifacts that some other video upscalers will have. Here's another upscale job of the woman we saw earlier. And you do see that the hairs on her head are much sharper. The eyes also seem to have higher definition. You can also customize the aspect ratio, which is the ratio between the height and the width of the video. So if we go down to the video options button underneath the prompt box that looks like the four corners of a rectangle, you can switch up the aspect ratio. There are six options right now, which pretty much covers everything you'll need. The 16 by 9 and 9 by 16 aspect ratios are the most common ones used for widescreen and vertical videos. You can also change up the frame rate in the same video options box. The default is 24 frames per second, which is a max. I usually just leave it at the default. While Pika Labs has improved its video generation quality, to get the best and most consistent results, especially for human generation, it's important to use reference images. Here's an example of a video I generated for a piano player. I didn't use any references and it just doesn't quite look right. The hands are pretty deformed and it also doesn't show the entire figure of the piano player, which is what I wanted. So instead, I've generated an image of a piano player in mid-journey that fits exactly what I want, and I'll use that as a reference image for the video. Below the prompt box, you'll see a paperclip attachment symbol, which can be used to upload an image or a video reference. So let's click on that and upload the piano player. To animate it, we don't actually need to enter any prompt, although you can if you want. We can just enter the generation job with the attached image and Pika will automatically start generating the video. The way that it works is that Pika will use your image as the first frame of the video. The generated videos are typically pretty consistent with the reference images. There's not much flickering between frames. The motions are also much improved from the beta version and look pretty lifelike. A really cool feature that Pika has is the camera motion control feature. Here's a mid-journey generated image of Christ the Redeemer landmark in Brazil. Let's see what we can do with it. First, let's upload the image as a reference in a Pika. Then using the motion control options box, which has an icon like a camera, you'll see a bunch of different camera control motions. It's pretty self-explanatory. You have the pan, tilt, rotations, and zoom camera motions. A cool thing about Pika 1.0 is you can actually combine different camera motions by simply selecting them. But let's start simple and just use a rotation camera motion. The strength of the motion slider will decide how much motion is going to be in the video. This applies both to the camera motion and also the movement of stuff inside your video. I'll leave that as one, which is the default. And we can see that we got an aerial shot with some rotation applied to it. If we want to extend this video, we can actually add in a different motion in the extended section. So let's open up that video of Christ the Redeemer and hit the add 4 seconds button. Pull up the motion control options and let's add the zoom out camera motion, which is a magnifying glass with a minus in it. In the extended video, the camera will start zooming out after 3 seconds. Now like I mentioned before, in extended videos, Pika tends to like to change stuff for some reason, whether it's some kind of deformation warping or in this case there's light beam shooting in. I'm not sure why this is the case, but we can fix this by using the negative prompt as before. So click on the parameters button and inside the negative prompt box, I'll add in extra keywords like light ray, light beams, in addition to the other keywords I use. Now when we go and generate that extended video, it won't have that light beam shooting in after 3 seconds. 
the motion parameter affects different video prompts in different ways, even if the differences in the prompts seem subtle. If you still remember the zebra from the beginning of this tutorial, if we add Studio Ghibli to the prompt with the motion set to 1, there's barely any motion at all. The zebra just stands still. So in that case, we'll need to turn up the motion parameter and generate the video again. And now we see our zebra move around a bit more. You can look at all the parameters you used with the info button that has an eye inside the circle below the mini video player. It shows everything from the camera motion to the negative prompts. This is why I said that the reprompt feature is really useful because clicking on it not only copies and pastes your prompt into the prompt box, but it also keeps all of the parameters and image references you used, which can save you a ton of time. You've probably noticed that you can also attach video references for the AI generator. This is what the video to video demo looked like in the Pika 1.0 trailer. It was pretty impressive to me, so let's see what we can do with it. I'm gonna use the stock footage of a jogger that I downloaded from pexos.com and see the quality of AI videos we can get from Pika when using this as a reference. So let's click on the attachment button and find the jogging video reference. Inside the prompt box, I'll use a fun prompt like Elf World of Warcraft Game Engine Render. Then copy and paste my negative prompt in the prompt box because the video to video does tend to deform and warp quite a bit. So let's see what we can get. So it's not bad, you do see the arms have some flickering and aren't perfect, but the head, legs, and background actually look pretty good. I tried a couple of different prompts with the jogger here. It does struggle a bit to keep things from deforming, even with a negative prompt. I'll play around with this a little bit more and make a video later on how to get the best out of the video to video feature. I would suggest that you use reference videos with a small and slow motion in them because if the motion is too big, Pika Labs will get confused and there's going to be a lot of deformities. There's a couple of nice unique features that Pika Labs has and those are video inpainting and video outpainting. Underneath the mini video player with the edit button that looks like a paintbrush, we can select it and underneath the prompt box a copy of the video and the modify region and expand canvas options pop up. Expand canvas is the outpainting tool and allows you to stretch the video to fit a specific aspect ratio. You can drag the corners of the original video to resize it and click and drag to move it around to customize the region that the original video will be in. So let's try to stretch the werewolf to a vertical video that has a 9 to 16 aspect ratio. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks now so let's just go ahead and generate it. This is one of the coolest features that Pika has. I'd really recommend trying the 5 to 2 outpainting aspect ratio to get extra wide cinematic videos. Here's a video of myself that I recorded from a previous video. I want to see if I can add some AI generated stuff to it. So let's go ahead and upload it into Pika. Then I'll use the expand canvas tool and try stretching it to a wide 5 to 2 aspect ratio. You do need to enter a prompt for the expand canvas tool. So I'll just put in something that describes me like a man in the living room. And let's generate the video. Changing the prompt that you put in for the expand canvas tool does make a difference. I can put myself in different types of apartments like one with neon colors. I also like trying out sci-fi type of backgrounds. The modify region tool is basically video in painting. If you use it, you can select a section of the video to make specific adjustments to. There's only a rectangular box for now, but you can resize it and move it around. I'll give myself sunglasses by moving the rectangle box to cover up my eyes, and then in the prompt add wearing sunglasses. You can also change up your clothing attire like wearing a suit. It does get weird proportions sometimes like I get this super skinny neck in some of them with neck tattoos, but it can also do some cool stuff like adding in Christmas decorations in the background. Here's one more example of the video in painting. I have this Pixar style man on a golf course. We can use the edit button and this time using the modified region, I'll add in a golf cart for him. So click and drag the rectangle right there should be good and I'll prompt for a golf cart. That's it, that covers all the basics of Pika 1.0 and it's got everything you need to get started. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll be posting a lot more advanced guides for Pika Lab, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that. 
Also, if you want to learn how to increase the frame rate of your videos beyond the maximum 24 frames per second, go and check out this video I have on frame interpolation.